What's up, Hayden Nation? Welcome to Talking to the Fans, episode 64. Um, if you haven't already, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe to the channel and to the video. Um, also, please follow my Instagram and TikTok. There's a lot of great content over there. I'm a baseball content creator, you know, mainly on TikTok and also on Instagram as well. I post mainly on those platforms. Hayden Baseball 5 on IG, um, Hayden Baseball 5 underscore 2 on TikTok. So let's get into this. Hey Nation, I'm here with Jameer. Um he's on Instagram and TikTok. He's a huge fan of my page. What's up, bro? What's up, bro? Also I'm here with BSBL Legacy. Um what's up bro? Welcome on. Uh, is he? You lagging? Oh boy. Are you lagging, Jameer? Or... Yeah, I think it's lagging. I think he's stuck. Oh. Because two of my in. Oh, there you go. Oh, there we go. Oh. Cool. <laughs> man. Jameer, what's up, bro? Welcome on. What's up, man? How you what's doing? Up, I'm doing pretty good. How about you? I'm doing good too. Yep. We're all doing good. Um, so with that being said, the second half of, you know, the MLB season is going to start, you know, later tonight. Um, today, as we're recording this, it is Friday, July 14th. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, before we get into all that, you know, second half talk and, you know, all these expectations around the league, um, Jameer, what is your baseball story? How did you get into the game of baseball? Um, I went – to my first Pirates game, cause I'm not really from down, not really from Georgia, I'm from Pittsburgh. So I just say my uncle took me to a Pirates game, and then me watching it made me love the game so much. Yeah. There you go. That's really awesome. How old were you when you went to that Pirates game? Man, I was about like five or six, maybe. Wow. Yep. I know you play high school baseball currently right now. What what is that like? Yeah, it's really it's really good. You figure this is gonna be my like my second year playing high school baseball. Um, just especially just interacting with all the other players that played last season. And yeah, it's really good. There you go. Um, you know, does I guess one thing, you know, while we're talking about high school baseball for a second, um do, do you and your team have like you know good com communication because you know that wins championships like just you know being around each other you know you know liking each other like does your high school team in general kind of have that feeling uh yeah we talk a lot i we talk during practices uh we help each other out we uh care for each other and um that's how we win games because yeah. – oh, sorry. Uh, I, I, uh, I was saying, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what I was saying was, yeah, we just we, – we communicate a lot, even in the infield when there's, like, bases loaded and or our pitchers being taken out. We just talk before we go back to our positions. There you go. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's all you can do. You got to – like, you got to have a good relationship with your teammates. If you don't have a good relationship – with the teammates, then, you know, you're not going to go anywhere because mental, mental health, you know, and, you know, that's a huge part of the game. And, you know, you want to, you want to be able to talk with your teammates on and off the field and have a good relationship with them because that goes a long way. Yep. Um, I guess with that being said, I guess we'll dive into, you know, the baseball types of stuff. Um, so second half, I'm near your Braves fan. Um, we're chasing a lot of things in the uh, second half, which, you know, I'll try and go over them, you know, relatively quickly because there's a lot of other teams that I want to get to as well. Um, but with the Braves, we got, you know, Spencer Strider chasing 300 strike, 300 strikeout. Um, Jameer, what's your opinion about that? And then Lacey, what's yours? Uh, I'll go first. Um, man, seeing Strider get the 300 is – it's pretty in, it's pretty crazy because you figure that it takes takes a lot of uh 
hard work into that. 300 strikeout was a lot, man. And um, I'm just saying, like, seeing him, it just, it's just crazy. It's like, he's just like, he just probably could be Cy Young contender, maybe, in the future. And, um, yeah. Yeah, so you think he gets 300? Uh, hopefully, man. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. I mean, that's all That's all I say as a Braves fan. I'm like, hopefully we get to this stuff. I don't ever be like, oh, we're going to get to this stuff no matter what. I'm just going to, you know, I'm just like, hopefully we get to this because, you know, there, there's confident and then there's being too confident. There's being cocky. And so, um, I guess, Legacy, what's your opinion on the chase to 300 strikeouts from Spencer Strider? 50-50. And I say that because um, 50 for yes, 50 for no. I say no. I feel like, for one, he's a little too young. For two, I mean, I know he's having good games and all, but sometimes these young guys can perform as well, but don't always ex- you know, exceed the high expectations. And I say yes because I still ha- I have a lot of hope for him to, to play good. And he still is. Like, he's had great games. And everything is he's probably Cy Young at this point. I feel like it's a good chance. Um, I could see him hitting 300 if he's still, you know, he's playing very great games, getting very good uh, outings of the game, getting a lot of strikeouts, which is a real big possibility the way he's been playing this year. So for me, it's kind of half and half. I could see yes, I could see no, but in reality, I might go with no just because I don't think he's just like right there yet. Spencer Strider, are you watching this? You got you got people saying no. What's your response <laughs> to that? <laughs> um, no, no. Nah, nah, his response is you know just go and grind every day. That's that's Spencer Strider in a nutshell. Like you know, he he takes out all the outside noise. He just goes out there and plays Spencer Strider ball every single day, and you know it's resulted in a great career so far. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, that is true. Yeah, I guess one more Braves question before we move on to the rest of the league. Um, so the Braves, they currently sit, you know, Friday, July 14th, 2023. Their record on the year sits at 61 and 28, best record in all of baseball. The Braves, they're chasing like their franchise win record of 106, set by the 98 Braves, which, you know, they're a great team and, you know, Refer to Morgan's Morgan Wallen's country song '98 Braves for more, but um, you know what a team they were in '98, and I I think this team can you know set the all time Braves win records, and to do that, they got to win 107 games. Which if they keep playing the way they're playing, I I see it happening. Um, Jameer, what is Jameer and Legacy? What does this team got to do to get to that? Get to those 107 wins in 2023. Um, they got to pretty much, they got to look, they got to limit the walks. Um, our bullpen needs to step up a little more. Uh, we got to, it's going to be tough because we got the Marlins. That's crazy right now. We got so many teams right now. That's pretty much, I'm not going to say hard to beat, but pretty much just hoping we get, Hoping we get there without any trouble. But, yeah, I think the Braves have a way to get to those wins. Yeah. Um, And on the next episode or an episode closer to the trade deadline, you know, we'll talk about a lot of trading pieces. But, um, you know, so stay tuned for that for future episodes. But Legacy, what's your thoughts on that? What do the Braves need to do to get to 107 wins? Again, let it walks too. Strong players just gotta stop swinging at bad pitches. They really do. Yeah, especially and, Eddie Rosario. Like Eddie Rosario, like he has been swinging a lot of bad pitches, and you know, yeah. I, I watch every game. I watch just about every pitch. Um, and Eddie's he's always swinging at those low pitches. And I think for Eddie's game, he's having a great year this year. But I think if he stops swinging at all those low pitches, I think it'll be a whole lot better for the team because of you know. Eddie Rosario, he's batting, he's batting like seventh in our lineup. You know, say that, say he starts an inning, you know, 
a strikeout versus a walk, you know, a walk sets the momentum more for the team because then you got eight, nine, and then you got the top of the order with Ronald coming up and, you know, it, it'd make this lineup even more dangerous and it's already very dangerous, but you know, if Rosario can stop swinging at those low pitches that, you know, pitchers are trying to get him to chase um, and they're succeeding. I think you're lagging, Hayden. I'm lagging. Um, can y'all hear me now? Yeah. So basically I was saying, you know, if Rosario can stop swinging at those slow pitches, I think him and the team is going to be way better off. Yeah, so... Hey, you're a laggy. Are we good? Yeah. Yeah, I think we're all right. All right. Um, stop swinging bad pitches, because you just, not even Rosario, even just the, even the star players can still swing the bad pitches, and that's just, that's just every player. Oh, yeah. Either Hayden, uh, I'm here. I like yeah. See, something yeah. happened. Yeah. It's weird. No, let see. He's saying he can hear me on my end. At least he just did. Yeah, because yeah. uh, yeah, because you were uh you were uh, lagging, and then just kicked me out. That's weird. Oh. Um, anyway. Stop swinging bad pitches. Bullpen, you're right. You does need to step up a little bit. I mean, most of the good teams kind of do as well, to be honest. Even the good teams out there, bullpen kind of needs to step up a little bit as well. But we'll get probably get, that, get to that later. Um, the starting rotation can stay healthy. It'll be even better. Instead of bringing up all these young guys, I feel like it's not their time yet, to be honest. I'm just trying to be 100% honest. Like, these new guys that you guys got, like, they're good. But, like, I think they just need to about a little bit more, just a little bit. Just because they're just not there yet, I feel like. But I mean, they're good. But you got you got to let players develop. That's how the game works, obviously. Yeah. Um, including your star players, most like two of them, I think are like. I think the main guys you got are real good. Or you know, you got I think you got Olsen and I, mean, I guess yeah, I, you can count Arcia. You can count um, Riley. They're good. The outfield's doing good too. Um, it's just walks bullpen and. Stop swinging at bad stuff, and otherwise, I think you'll be okay. But like, some of the guys just kind of step up a little bit. Yeah. Um. Next question. You know, we got a lot of other teams to talk about right now who are looking really good. Um. But you know, let's focus on BSBL Legacy and his Dodgers because you guys, it's looking like you guys and the Arizona Diamondbacks are in for a huge pennant race. I mean, as a Dodger fan, like. What's your thoughts on the Diamondbacks and the Dodgers? I mean, that that pennant race is gonna is looking very scary. I mean, as we enter today, both teams are tied at the top of the National League West. As of right now, we're up by I think a game or zero point five game. No, nah, y'all right are now. tied. I actually have the standings up right now. Y'all are actually tied. I remember seeing we were up by one game and they were down by one loss. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I, I can't even see that. You're not even showing the standings. Yeah, no, that's it. No, it says we have 51, they have 52. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Actually, like, you know, what it's saying is, you know, the Dodgers are 51 and 38, but the Diamondbacks, they're 52 and 39. So that that actually is tied just because, you know, the Diamondbacks have played more games than the Dodgers. Well, it's not – I'm just going to say it's not tied because um, if it was tied, it would be the same record, but I'm not going to get into that. Mm -hmm. I guess you could say tied, I guess. I don't feel that's yeah. tied, but yeah. – these, uh, these standings on Google or whatever, they're saying tied, so I'm going with tied. But I think the standings are wrong. But um, I personally, I don't see the Diamondbacks at all. Uh, getting closer to us than at this point. I don't see any other team like the Padres getting closer either. I say that because the Dodgers have created a lot of guys, old guys that stay together for years. Even the new guys we keep even bringing in for a couple of years back, like Mookie and Freddie and a bunch of other guys uh, step up and whatnot. Our rotation's all right. Um, they got to step it up. 
the bullpen is, is doing all right. Like I said, all the other teams have the good teams need their bullpen to step up. Um, I don't see the Diamondbacks catching up, and I say it because they're too young. They're, they're just too, too young. With, with Carroll and Gallon and a bunch of other players, I, I can't see them stepping up just because they're too young. They got to still develop. I, that's just sometimes how baseball works. You get a good team, but it depends who the team is, depends who the players are, depends what, you know, what you're really going for. So I can't really see the Diamondbacks competing for like, even like the, maybe like the last two months, I feel like wanted to be a pennant race at this point. And I guess an example I can use for one of those types of teams, you know, before I get to Jimmy, your thoughts, like, example I could use is you know the the Diamondbacks are the 2018 Braves but you know the Braves they didn't have to deal with like anybody really too good in that division I mean if you look back um the Braves went 90 and 72 the Nationals the closest they were at the end of the year because they ended up falling off the end of the year they really did their record was like 82 and you know 80 and of course you know the Braves they were just too good in 2018 to you know not win that division and at that point so but the Diamondbacks they're dealing with the exact opposite they're dealing with they're they're dealing with a LA Dodgers team who is just stacked and who has you know been performing for years now who is going to win more than 90 games but I could see the Diamondbacks winning like 90 games right now um and who knows really what this Dodger team could do they could win 91 games they could win 101 games it it really just all factors into you know how they do at the end of the year. So, uh, heads up, we got 10 minutes left. Really? Wow. Yeah. So, Jimmy, what's your thoughts on the uh, Dodgers and Diamondbacks race? Um, I'm going to say the Dodgers might. So, the Dodgers are probably going to be the, the top, you know, West. That is right. Yeah, yeah, the West, you know, West, uh, leading division, the leading team in division to win the AL West. Um, I don't think the Diamondbacks are going to. They're still going to make it to playoffs, but they're probably going to make it in first place. Cause the Dodgers are just so good, and it's just so hard to beat them. Figure that they got Mookie Betts, Freeman, a Muncy, um, all those all those players are just too good. Just, just can't. Just yeah, we really can't. I'm gonna try and hopefully we can all like try and talk a little quickly here, so we can get as much out as we can about the game. With you know eight eight forty five, we got on the recording, but um, I guess one team I'll talk about really quickly is the Cincinnati Reds. They are they might win the Central this year. I mean, they got great players like you know Ellie De La Cruz, you know Alexis Diaz in that bullpen, um, you know more great players, um. But how are you guys feeling about the Reds? Uh, quick opinions about the Reds. Um, man, Reds. What's crazy is that we beat the Reds too in the beginning yeah. of the season. We swept them, but, but man, just seeing them just grind all the way through June and Ju- the rest of June and July is crazy. It's like L- uh, LAD like Cruz is just. I don't know. Could be brick of the year later. Um, you got Alexis Diaz just shutting down batters left and right, and it's just Spencer Steer. Man, he's really good too. He's um, good. yeah, yeah, the Reds, man, they're looking good. Look like they're gonna make it to the uh, postseason. Yep. Legacy thoughts. Um, they they definitely are having a good year without a doubt. I mean, June they had like what twelve game win streak, and that was they tied that from like the sixties back then, I guess, which was yeah. insane from their own team record. Um, two, I mean, you got the phenom Melly De La Cruz saying he's the fastest man alive. I mean, we see him; he's still second, third, and home against Milwaukee. Uh, the man's hit nukes. The guy. Literally hit a cycle, I think, in his first two weeks, if I remember. Yeah. And that was against and that was against the Braves. Um you got again, Alexis Diaz again, one another phenom, Edwin Diaz's brother. So of course the Diaz brothers are gonna shut it down. Um 
you got, you know, you got people like Joey Votto back finally. People were missing that guy. He's still very yep. decent, but good. Uh, Jonathan India, um, Spencer Steer, uh, their outfield's pretty ready, pretty decent. So they got a good team. I, I could see him. I definitely could see him winning the Central this year just because no other team is just no, – they can't perform the way like they are. Um, yeah. Should make the playoffs? Uh, yeah, I just do make the playoffs for sure. If they keep doing what they're doing and, you know, let, even let players rest too because that's how it works as well. Sometimes other teams, when you're, you got a good team, they don't let players rest and it causes them to play really sloppy in a slump or something. And that can hurt the team a lot. So if they keep playing and keep bringing up these guys, give people rest and – you can help the healthy and rested, and uh, they got a really good chance of even possibly making deep run in the playoffs. So in baseball, you can never really know. So I could see him making the playoffs. I just don't know how far they'll go. Yeah. Um. Another pennant race that I want to talk about really quick because this one is looking like it's going to be a great one too. The Rangers currently have a two game lead, um, over the Astros in the West, Ooh. and a six game lead over the Mariners. And the Angels. I mean, it's kind of hard to cover all these teams from, you know, all of us. But, you know, let's cover the pennant race because, you know, it, it really could be between any of those four teams. Um, so let me get y'all's thoughts on that. Jameer, I guess um, I'll let you go first. Oh, man, that's going to be a tough, it's going to be a tough race because I think that the Mariners are going to probably take it. Because you figure that they had a lot of stars on that team, like uh, Crawford, Julio, and yeah, it's just I don't know. The Astros look good, and then the uh, their Angels are looking good. Yeah, it's probably hard to beat them because it's like because the Angels. I don't know Angels. <sighs> They have a chance, but I don't know. You figure they haven't been in the postseason in years. So you figure that they probably – you figure that uh, Angels probably going to win uh, as too many games later in the season. I don't know. But, yeah, I'm going to say the Mariners are going to take it. Yeah. Legacy, what are your thoughts? In response to that, it's not a bad choice, honestly. I mean, you got Julio, you got – Castillo, you got um, what's his face, Kirby, and a bunch of other guys. They're good. I just can't. I can see him probably taking second, maybe even first two. Uh, the Rangers. I mean, you got. They probably would have been better if Jagram was still in. Sadly, he's not this year. Hate to hear that. Uh, I mean, they literally just got Chapman not that long ago before the break, and you know he's the what they call him, the Cuban missile. Clearly, clearly. Um, you got other pitchers too. Um, then you got the former Dodger, Corey Seager. He's having a great year. Um, miss him so much. Um, Garcia, you know, he's, he's doing good. Um, Jonah Heim, pretty good for them as a catcher. He's really good. Uh, and then you got the guys like the Astros. You got Altuve, you got Jordan. Um, you still got Bregman. You still got, um, I don't know. It's going to be tough. I just – I don't know who's going to win because both, like, all teams, honestly, are good enough and decent enough to either make – either to win the race or even just make the pennant or just even make the wild card spot. So, like, you can't really tell because the Astros can't step it up right now. They can't – it's hard for them to kind of win games. And and Dusty Becky even said in the beginning, I'm not really worried right now until the end. He's not wrong. But you got to make some adjustments now. And that, and that definitely begins with the deadline for sure. Uh, Mariners, I don't really need to see him going for anyone as well. I think they're okay. I think they're fine where they're at right now, especially with Julio. Um, the Rangers are good. I don't think they need anyone else to help them out. I think all the teams are really decent. The Angels, on the other hand, uh, no, sorry, no. Athletics, definitely not. So it's either, so for my well, it's not even in this. I'm sorry, no. Uh, they're going to get sold. Um, and my picks at this point is either between like the Rangers and the Mariners. I just can't see the Astros as defending champions the way they're playing really poorly. You don't expect this from a team like that. So um, no, for me, it's Rangers and Mariners. I can't see the Astros. Yeah. yeah. 
So we got a minute 30. I'm just going to say, unless it cuts us off, which hopefully it doesn't, but I'm going to make sure it doesn't cut us off. But I got one more question for Jameer, a little small question before we wrap it up. But um, I'm going to say, hey, Nation, I appreciate y'all watching this episode of Talking to the Fans. Please go follow the Instagram and TikTok if you haven't already. Um, great content over there. We got a tournament in November coming up on IG Live, so you might want to go follow the Instagram. And that'll be the show tournament. Um, but you know, anyways, my last question for Jameer, and by the way, peace out, Hayden Nation. But um, you know, the last question I got is if you had to choose a creator to challenge to come on the uh, podcast, who would you choose? And really quickly, because we got less than a minute. Um, uh, I want to, I want Austin Clasher to come on here. I really want him to come on here to express his stuff. That'd be so, great. Yeah. Yep. I have to reach well, out to Austin. Well, yep. it's been challenged, so if you're watching, look out for Hayden's DMs or something. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, cause you met him at Truist Park last Angel uh, in uh, May. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yep, you did his videos. Yeah. <laughs> yep. All right. All right. Well, peace out, Hayden Nation. appreciate you guys watching. All right.